Good evening and welcome back to the 10 days of prayer. Tonight we're looking at praying God's promises. And this is especially a unique message due to the fact that it is one filled with promise and ultimately it is one that we should apply in our daily lives every single moment, not just when the difficult times come, but throughout our lives. Now I want to start off with our scripture reading found in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 and it reads as follows, Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. Now notice that this verse almost sounds like a universal key to ask God anything and he will just blanket statement give it to us, but that is not what the verse implies. As a matter of fact, it actually refers to the fact that if we ask according to the will of God. Now, we already touched on that, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that point. But I want us to move on to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Now, you can read both those verses. I condensed it just to give you the gist of what it's basically saying. But it's basically getting to the point where we are redeemed so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now notice that the biggest promise we can receive is the Holy Spirit. That is the promise we should long for and desire our whole lives for is that extra portion of the Holy Spirit. When I think about this, my mind actually jumps to Elijah when he ascended to heaven in the chariot of fire and he told Elisha to ask anything that he desires and Elisha's response was a double portion of the Holy Spirit. That is what we are to long for, is that double portion of the Holy Spirit, not just for our sake, but in order to finish the work that lies ahead of us, in order to await actively and not passively the second coming of Jesus. Now notice this quote from My Life Today, and it says the following, To blot the promises of God from the Word would be like blotting the sun from the sky. They would then be nothing to gladden our experience. God has placed the promises in his word to lead us to have faith in him. Let us then rest in God. Let us praise him for giving us such a glorious revelation of his purposes. Now notice that to blot out the promises of God is virtually an impossible task. Without those promises in the Bible, she says that there would be nothing to gladden our experience with God and even on this earth. Beloved, it is therefore vital that we incorporate God's promises in our everyday living. If we should neglect to claim these promises, we are basically denying ourselves the ability to experience God's joy. Now notice John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, which says, Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. But notice, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. But the condition of this asking anything in Jesus' name is relying on the fact that we do so with the intent of bringing glory to God. If that is our desire, if that is our motive, then ultimately it will not be denied us. So basically what we are claiming here would be promises that glorify God's name above all else. Notice, Dedrich Bonhoeffer actually wrote in prison while he was in a concentration camp during the Second World War the following. God does not give us everything we want, but he does fulfill his promises. Hearing our prayers and leading us along the best and straightest paths to himself. Now that is a clear promise that ultimately God doesn't just give us what we want, but he gives us everything in order to bring us closer to him. That is God's desire is to draw us closer to himself. And that is a promise that Dietrich Bonhoeffer himself held dear to right up to the end of his life just before the Second World War ended. Dietrich Bonhoeffer knew that God was faithful to his promises, even when he was experiencing difficult and challenging times. He would claim those promises as if it were his own because he knew that God would come through in the end. Now notice the Desire of Ages once again says, God is well pleased when they make the very highest demands upon him, that they may glorify his name. They may expect large things if they have faith in his promises. 
Now notice, beloved, it doesn't say we can ask anything in big things, but those big things are to be for the glory of God's kingdom. And that is a sure way that we can know that God will answer our prayers as soon as we come to the realization that God desires us to be drawn closer to him and that our prayers should always be aimed at the glory and the honor of his name right here on earth. Now, beloved, if we can think of examples of this in the Bible, we can look at people like Daniel and his three friends who prayed not that their will should be done, even that their lives should be saved only if it was for the glory of God's name. We think of Joseph way back in the Old Testament where he also desired God's name to be glorified amidst everything that was taking place. So we can find countless examples and maybe even the biggest example was Jesus that prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will. And ultimately, he still had to die on the cross in order to bring about salvation to humanity, even though it didn't work out to save his life in the end, but he knew that his mission was bigger than that of his life. So ultimately, everything works together for the good of those who believe. And that is exactly what we lay claim to this evening. Now, we have been praying for a couple of evenings, a lot of different things, ranging from the COVID-19 pandemic right through to even the elderly who are lonely. But tonight, we want to stand still and pray specifically for pastors who are struggling in the worldwide context to find ways to keep church members connected and ultimately to minister during these crazy times we find ourselves in. Now, me being a pastor, I can attest to this reality that it is a challenge to find ways to have meaningful contact with church members. And I would like us to pray for pastors worldwide for this very specific reason. But I also want us to pray for ADRA. Now, for those of you who don't know, ADRA is the Adventist Development Relief Agency. And ultimately, we're praying for them because they're trying to meet as much needs as possible across the globe. Ultimately, they're looking to meet practical needs. Yes, with the hope of bringing the gospel in, but ultimately to meet needs such as hunger and homelessness and, 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 and starvation. They're really trying to meet those needs. And ultimately, we need to pray for them, especially during, once again, this pandemic, as they're trying to help and alleviate suffering as much as possible. So let us pray for God to create in his servants a creative way and, and thinking to reach out to people worldwide. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to come to you in prayer. And Father, we thank you that we can lay claim to these promises. And we do believe that everything works for the glory of your name. And that is our prayer this evening, that everything we ask would work together for good not just for us, but Father, for the glory of you. So Father, we pray specifically this evening for the pastors worldwide who are struggling to have meaningful connections with their church members. And Father, we also pray that you would grant uh, divine wisdom and insight as to how pastors globally can better serve you and ultimately your flock as well. And Father, we pray in a special way also for Adra, as they strive to bring relief from suffering. Father, may you give them the means, may you provide that they might be able to provide to others in return. Father, bless us in our efforts to reach out to people in whatever the need may be, whether it is physical, emotional, spiritual, and even psychological. Father, may we realize that the dependence, or at least that we should be involved in reaching out to other people, that we should not be depending on these agencies such as ADRA or Meals on Wheels, but Father, that we would be desiring to get involved ourselves. Yes, we might not be able to provide on such a large scale, but may we seek ways within our community to reach out to people in an effective way. May it be with a smile or a kind word or even just some food for people who are struggling to, to work or have lost their jobs. Father, may we look for opportunities to help others. May we have that compassion of Christ within us. And ultimately, Father, may your name be glorified in this attempt to reach out to others. So, Father, we pray these things, not because we are worthy, but in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, beloved, for joining us this evening. And I look forward to tomorrow evening as we continue the 10 days of prayer. God bless and go and claim these promises as we progress during this week. Goodbye.